we capture a percentage of that population that go by that billboard during the campaign length. And within a certain look back window, three, seven, 14, or 21 days, usually for B2B companies is 14 days. We track whether or not that mobile ID fired that pixel on the website and fired the pixel on the conversion page. And we tie it back to that specific billboard on that specific area on the 405. How is none of this on your website? (laughs) You guys have a in-person real life pixel. Like, how are you not leading with that? That's crazy. Marketing is about values. Nike didn't call me and sell me this in a catalog. I bought this swoosh because it's ingrained in my soul. When you have a product that really resonates with with customers, the word of mouth uh, grows like wildfire. Welcome to the Marketing Max Show. Now, let's dive in. All right. Welcome to another episode of the Marketing Max Show. Today, I have the founder of OneScreen.ai on, Greg Wise. And the reason why I have him on the podcast is because I recently read a study that 98% of marketers across pretty much all 50 states in the US have invested in digital advertising this year. No shit. But 67% of those marketers surveyed who are investing in digital ads say that they are seeing declining results and a lot of steady declining results from all of their paid efforts. So as Marketing Max, I immediately asked myself, what other channels can us marketers and founders and CEOs use to reach these digitally exhausted audiences since everyone's seeing declining results from digital? And I wanted to know what other ways that we can use to reach these digitally exhausted audiences outside of the things that I always talk about in my newsletter, on Twitter, and this podcast. My digging led me to this thing called Out of Home 2.0, which has been pioneered, or I guess is being pioneered. I guess we'll get into that, but uh, it was kind of invented or is being pioneered by OneScreen.ai. So reached out to OneScreen on LinkedIn, and here we are with their founder on the podcast. So right. thanks for thanks for being here. <laughs> yeah, Max, I appreciate you having me. That was um, that was basically spot on in terms of our hypothesis about three and a half years ago. Was I don't want to say predicting, but seeing sort of uh, some patterns in the way digital marketing was you know was going, um, and how competitive it was becoming, how costly it was becoming. Um, and really how much more difficult it was to use just the traditional digital marketing playbook to scale customer acquisition, whether it was honestly B2B or B2C. So that's what my co-founders and I looked to this industry, being out of home advertising, as potentially another channel for all of these marketers kind of coming off that traditional digital marketing playbook um, into this new space. Because for a lot of these marketers, this is new. Right. I mean, you mentioned it. People don't know much about out of home. We wanted to make it approachable. We wanted to make it measurable. And that's what 2.0 really is. Um, because out of home has been around for hundred, hundreds of years, honestly, dating back to any hieroglyphics you've seen on cable, right? <laughs> yeah. Literally an ad or a a a phrase, something on a physical structure is technically out of home. We wanted to help modernize it for the modern marketer, period. Um, Not to say that digital marketing isn't working, but we do feel like an omni-channel approach is the way going forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as Marketing Max, someone who spent tens of millions of dollars of other people's money on (laughs) ads and marketing in general, I have never spent a single penny on out of home except maybe like an event booth. Uh, or like a booth at an event, which to your point could be considered out of home. But 99.9% of all the money I've spent, the tens of millions of dollars of other people's money has been spent primarily on Facebook and Google ads uh, and some some alt platforms. So the word omni-channel, right? Everyone talks about it forever. When you say you think it's going more omni-channel and, and it's more effective to be, uh, or or to include an omni-channel approach, How do you guys typically find yourself seeing one screen fitting into that current omni-channel approach? Or maybe we should start with what is out of home 2.0 to you guys? 
Yeah, and, and I'll start there. Um, out of home 2.0 is taking what has traditionally been looked at as a top on a funnel medium, right? Out of home has usually been sort of this perceived as a top of the funnel ad medium, right? Uh, uh, tactic. What we're doing is infusing data and technology to make it more of a bottom of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel tactic for marketers. And we do that by overlaying audience data in terms of just finding the right formats to advertise on, as well as data to actually help understand the efficacy of, of a campaign, right? And being able to measure the efficacy of a campaign in the real world has never been possible before. So we want to be able to help participate in in the objective um, uh, for our customers. We want to participate that by, by, by giving data on how out of home performs some, towards some sort of, sort of KPI that a customer cares about. Web traffic, lead generation, online uh, e-commerce sales, foot traffic to a physical location. Um, but the other thing too, is that we also want to offer learnings. By no means are we saying that out of home is guaranteed to work. What we are going to tell you is what, formats did work better than others towards whatever objective ROI objective you have. Um, that way we can actually further optimize campaigns going forward, which marketers are super used to doing online, right? It's testing, optimizing, testing, optimizing. I will say, because you mentioned it, uh, <laughs> not to get on my soapbox here, but look, I was at HubSpot back in the day with my co-founders. I sold hard against that at home. <laughs> because it was outbound versus inbound. I did it pretty well and never thought in a million years I'd be doing this. However, uh, seeing sort of the shift in consumer behavior, seeing the shift in how the digital landscape was evolving, um, led us to this industry where it is very impactful, um, but it's a little bit old school. It's a little bit archaic in some of the methodologies, some of the technology. Um, and that's why we built one screen, um, because we do see this shift in the way some of these performance-oriented marketers are going to have to look at scaling customer acquisition going forward. Right? If yeah. CAC is increased online and all your eggs in the digital marketing basket, what else are you going to do? Um, so we think that this is one of those things, and we think that you know marketing has become very much like a finance position. Right, it's a dollar in and two dollars out, and it Couldn't has to be more. a certain calculated approach every single time. Yeah, and I think that that's where this the disruption cycle is happening, right? Um, and, and marketing is facing that head on, and a lot of companies have relied on that growth, and we're seeing a lot of those companies suffering from that. So instead of that short term gratification, uh, what's that long term brand affinity approach? And that word brand is very very important there. Um, it's going from demand to brand, and we're seeing this evolution. We're seeing 2024 going to be a, a big, big uh, jump for a lot of marketers um, looking to build that trust and authority and build community. Uh, and out of home is an awesome canvas for that. That's yeah, my soapbox. I mean, I'm off now. I, <laughs> I, like I said, I've spent virtually zero dollars on on out of home and. I'm sure we can get into all the reasons why, but the main reason is attribution, right? Like, sure. I you I love the 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 phrase you gave that marketing is basically becoming a finance role. I got into marketing because I was working on Wall Street in investment banking, helping companies raise capital. And one of my clients looked at me and said, "I want you to run my Facebook ads." And she gave me two thousand dollars of Facebook ad spend back in two thousand sixteen. I turned that two k into twenty k and was like, "Man, the Facebook ads manager." is really like a Bloomberg terminal. Like I can buy attention instead of stocks and I can figure out the cost to reach this thousand group of people. And you know, the CPM is this and the cost to get in front of this thousand group of people is higher because it's a more targeted audience or other brands are willing to pay more for it. And I've built my career pretty much on the back of that, being able to attribute revenue, whether it was a Facebook ad or a Google ad or influencer campaigns I've done for clients yeah. or projects I've done for myself. I mean, is there actually a way to measure attribution on out of home without saying, you know, go to nike.com slash 
whatever and tracking the traffic on that particular page or maybe it's all using QR codes. Like I can't even fathom like how we can actually track that. <laughs> so let me answer that head on. So truly. <laughs> imagine, you're doing a billboard, imagine you're doing a billboard campaign in LA um, and uh, you're on the 405. I'm going to make this up. Uh, imagine you're on a couple of billboards there and you, you drive down the 405 and you've certainly seen these boards. Here's the methodology. So it's based on a pixel that gets dropped on your website. Mm -hmm. brand's website, typically a home page, and then some sort of conversion page. Take the use case of a B2B company. Usually it's going to be their home page as well as a uh, conversion page after a demo request, the contact us form is filled out. So those pixels get dropped there. Essentially, what we're doing is we're creating an area in front of that billboard that your ad is on, and we call that a view shed. It's an area where a human being in a car on the 405 would actually have an opportunity to see that billboard, to see your ad playing. We capture a percentage of that population that go by that billboard during the campaign length. And within a certain look back window, three, seven, 14, or 21 days, usually for B2B companies is 14 days, we track whether or not that mobile ID fired that pixel on the website and fired the pixel on the conversion page. And we tie it back to that specific billboard on that specific area on the 405. How is That's none of this perfect. on your website? <laughs> no, like, like dead serious, our... dead serious. <laughs> like I saw that survey or whatever it was, the research point. I went looking for like, is out of home even possible for performance marketers like me? I landed on your website. It said nothing about like, you guys have a in-person real life pixel. Like, how are you not leading with that? That's crazy to me. I truly like, right, you can hear my voice. This is the first time I'm ever hearing this. This is wild. <laughs> fair enough. Um, and you're absolutely right. And that's, uh, truthfully, it's great feedback. Uh, certainly we'll relay that and we're overhauling the website. But it is fascinating. And to be honest with you, you know, one of the things that we lean into as well as is it's not 100% of the population. It is directional data. It's directional data, right? Um, we don't model it out. We don't extrapolate the data. It is raw data that we feed back to our customers. Um, and we will certainly model or extrapolate it out and hypothesize, you know, if we were able to capture 100% of the population, what could conversions look like? But at the end of the day, 2.0 represents the juxtaposition between what we're doing with Adafone and what's been done in the past, which is basically this, Max. You buy a billboard and you contract with that billboard owner and you're supposed to get a million impressions for the month. And the billboard owner says, hey, Max, your campaign is done. You got a million impressions. And you're like, shit, what do I do with that information? That is what has been communicated. That's what measurement has been in the past. We're like, well, that's not going to work, right? Um, so that's where we developed this methodology. And by the way, those mobile IDs that we can capture that go by the billboards, we can also retarget those people online. So we can feed it back to your Facebook ad account. You can start to retarget people on social. We're developing integrations to be able to do that on LinkedIn as well. So there's that sort of omni-channel approach that comes into this as well. Um, and we're also exploring other integrations with other pieces of typical marketing stacks as well. Do you have any sort of data on how accurate what I'm calling like an in-person pixel is? Or, you know, you're saying it's not 100% of the population, but, you know, if it's to use your example, on the 405, that's like 100,000 people driving by it every single day. You know, what percent, do you have sure. any data on what percent of that might actually be tracked on that pixel? And then what yep. percent of the data that's tracked is actually matched to... The, IP? the actual IP that we can yep. then track of 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 uh, website visits. Yeah, I'll just give you an example of a campaign a re uh, campaign recap we did today for for a customer B two B customer doing campaigns in Chicago, Atlanta, and Boston. Um, we're able to capture between like nineteen and twenty three percent of all the mobile IDs that go by the board. Um, and, and when we do the IP matching. We're typically in the 86 to 92 percent range in terms of the matching to to the IP address. That's really high. And forgive me, I'm going on mute. The the downside of doing 
the podcast outside and working outside is when my neighbors are mowing their lawn. You can hear. It. <laughs> but I would take, <laughs> like I said, I was I'm in Boston. I would take <laughs> the the lawnmower. I would take bees buzzing if I could sit outside and take this podcast. Well, my my wife doesn't love the mosquitoes, but yeah, I would still take this. We moved from New York. Big reason being the snow, and yeah, it's oh, December so or middle middle of December, and I'm in shorts. So yeah, it's all good. Um, so. The the pixel the what did you call it the view shed what is that uh, view, yep, the shed. view shed so it's the area uh, in front of a billboard essentially it's an area where you'd be have you'd have an opportunity when you're driving a car to actually see the billboard got it and what technology are you guys using to actually put that around like the billboard or like four hundred five or yeah that geofencing technology is actually based on machine learning that. Okay. If I gave you, if I tried to give you that specific answer, it would come across as a bunch of bullshit. Um, <laughs> okay. That's what it is. And our, our engineering that. team, our C, my CTO will be able to uh, answer that with uh, much more credibility. No problem. I, I appreciate the CEOs that don't come up with BS answers and that actually say, you know what, my my other guy can answer that better or I just don't know. Um, where I was going with that though is, my second biggest apprehension to out of home after attribution. So let's assume that the attribution is even remotely close to Facebook sure. post iOS 14, which would still be amazing considering, like you said, you know, billboards going back to the caveman days. My second biggest apprehension is cost. Like it sounds really expensive to have this machine learning, this view shed feature. And then also like, you know, getting in front of a hundred thousand people driving by, on a sign on the 405 every single day in Los Angeles sounds like it would be really, really, really expensive. The few people I've talked to uh, that have tried to sell me or sell our clients on out of home say it's like minimum a hundred grand just to get started. So, you know, does, does that add even more? Like is the downside to out of home 2.0 more expensive campaigns? No. So we're just adding the data layer to it to make it, uh, uh, Again, I use the word modernized, but the data-driven approach that we're applying, it's an overlay to what already exists, right? The the actual infrastructure, the billboards exist. Sure, new billboards and networks are being brought online all the time. Um, but we're adding the data layer to help you identify, well, which billboards on the 405 should you buy based on your actual ICP? And that ICP could be broken down by everything as basic as household income. Uh, to cars they drive, clothes they wear, occupation, uh, family structure, home ownership, down to profession, right? So you're a B2B company and you're targeting marketers or you're targeting members of the legal team, you're targeting C-suite individuals, uh, you're targeting operations folks. We layer all of that in to tell you where in the LA market you should actually advertise, specifically like where on the 405. Billboards don't have to be that expensive. The investment in out of home, I would actually argue whoever has said it's a hundred thousand dollar minimum, it certainly depends. Um, we never say that there's a minimum. What we always tell people is we want to make sure that you're getting the right impact towards an objective that you care about measuring, right? So it's always about what is your measure of success? Max, if you told me that you wanted to do a market takeover a market domination in Boston, I would tell you at least 100K. And that's on the minimum side. Of course. Um, but if you wanted to run a proper test and we determine that your ICP could be targeted with one or two high impact bulletins on a couple of major roadways, you're certainly not spending $100,000. It's far less than that. You do not have to spend um, or invest that much in order to see an impact. Our job is to make sure that um, we walk before we run, quite frankly. And a great way to test uh, an out of home is around even just a conference, which is even on a smaller scale. It's you know one to three days. It's a very targeted approach where you know your target audience is in one place, um, and you typically don't have to buy as much media, so the costs there are, are, are much less. I, I was going to ask selfishly because it is. I mean, the show's named after me. Uh, <laughs> so my my newest company project is is agencyreviews.io, right? It's nice. Yelp for marketing agencies. Congrats. Thank you. 
we're growing awesome. pretty fast, but if I wanted to use out of home to grow the um, the demand side of the marketplace, so if I wanted to get CEOs, founders, and marketers who are looking to hire a new agency, if I want to get in front of them and say, hey, find your next great agency on agencyreviews.io, you know, where we're just talking about budget, let's say I have $10,000 a month to spend. Is that insane? Or like, what would the minimum budget be? Like, let's pick a budget and then let's actually yeah. like, work through the campaign because I've never, th I've never given this a thought for any of my own projects because I always thought it was 100K minimum and there was no way to track attribution. So why in the world would I ever do that? Why would you? That's exactly it. And that's kind <laughs> of what, that, that, that's been sort of uh, how Out of Home has been looked at to your point, period. Um, I would say this. I'd want to know a little bit more about that ICP. I'd want to little bit, know a little bit more about the kinds of companies that the, the, those folks uh, have or they, they run um, and where they're located. And that's important because a tier one city versus a tier two or even a tertiary market um, is going to certainly dictate costs. The example is going to be the one-on-one -on -one in San Francisco. Every single startup tech company wants to be on the one-on-one -on -one <laughs> in San Francisco. Like, you're, that's, that's not unique, right? We hear that every day. Um, <laughs> cool. Like you and everyone else like you. Uh, same thing with New York. Um, that's going to be a little bit more costly. I would say, you know, ten thousand dollars a month to target C-suite individuals in San Francisco may not get you the impact that you're looking for. However, uh, in a tier two market, so let's just take a Seattle is a great tech market. Salt Lake City is a great tech market. The, you know, Silicon Valley of the slopes, uh, Austin, Dallas, your Atlantas of the world, even Boston is sort of that below a tier one, uh, where you stretch your dollar a little bit further. Yeah. $10,000 a month could make sense. Now we want to say, now we want to start thinking about uh, duration of the campaign, right? So it's reach and frequency. So typically what we're going to recommend, no matter where you are, is at least an eight to 12 week campaign. And that way you're in market, reaching enough people, but with that frequency that we all know is extremely critical, right? Seven to 11 times you need to see some sort of an ad in order to take some sort of action. Um, so all of that plays into how much we'd recommend you spending in a given market. For a conference, $10,000 actually is a pretty good budget for a two or three day conference. Depending on where it is, you could do wow. something for as little as 2000 bucks a day for an LED truck that's parked outside of the conference center. And that LED truck has three sides to it. It has the sight, sound, and motion. Um, and it's digital and you can play full motion. Uh, you can do a fleet of wrapped cars. Um, so think about like Uber and Lyft cars wrapped in your branding and park it outside in the ride share line. Um, you could do billboards. Maybe there's, you know, like Vegas, you could do digital billboards leading from the airport to the conference center, um, to the strip. Uh, and that's fairly cost effective as well. So it really just depends. Um, but again, it's identifying where do these C-suite individuals go? How do they spend their time and money? How do they move to and from their specific headquarters? And we use all that data to determine what makes the most sense to them. So the, the two things I was thinking of or two and a half was like doing something at South By for agency reviews since it's all startup people. But I imagine I imagined it would be so, so, so expensive because... I mean, it's a tiny, tiny city. There's only so many billboards. I didn't even think about the those trucks that drive, but I didn't realize those could be as low as two thousand bucks a day. That's it could be two thousand bucks a day. Honestly, sometimes it's even less than that, depending on the market. Um, and typically, you'll get them for like eight hours a day. And the reason, so think about out of home, we have stationary billboards, right? You have digital, and static, what we call fourteen by forty-eight billboards. That's your traditional billboard on the side of the 405. Um, then you have what we call frequency formats. And those are going to be things like uh, bus shelters that you see on every single block or digital panels you see you know, in city centers. Frequency meaning that you're going to see more of them. You're going to see them more often. Then you have what we call all sort of bottom of the funnel um, proximity targeted formats like a truck, like a car like a plane, where we can actually custom route the format, meaning an LED truck can be placed here 
or skiers. drive around or the convention center. Drive around yeah. Where other inventory doesn't exist, right? Because you are dealing with the physical world and the structures either exist or they don't exist. Well, LED trucks can be driven wherever a car is permanent. Um, so for eight hours a day, custom routed, a couple thousand bucks a day, it can be extremely effective. And we do a ton of it. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I have South by Traffic and Conversion Summit in Vegas in January and then inbound every year in Boston. I forget when that is, but like those are all where like a bunch of marketers are congregating. Like truly, this is blowing my mind. I never realized I could spend 10 grand, 20 grand and like get that kind of impact. I guess tracking would, like we said, like if the view shed, right? That's what it's called. If the view shed is working well and uh, we have, you know, good Google Analytics data, we could at least see like increase in traffic per city, per state in a given time zone. Um, that's yeah, right. That's, that's really interesting. You absolutely nailed it. Um, the other thing too, uh, we talked about this before as marketing became a finance position mm -hmm. is when you think about creative. So marketers, a lot of times, uh, or at least now when we talk about creative without a phone, that is at least half the battle. Um, you talk about, people talk about like, how do you be healthy and maybe lose weight? It's like, well, diet is like 65% of the battle. <laughs> Same thing here with out of home. Your creative is everything. Um, like for you, I love the idea of an LED truck sort of scrolling through reviews. Maybe the reviews of the agencies and the people attending the conference, right? You have an attendee list and you're cycling through those or it's a live feed. Like that's where we believe marketing is going to go back to. You know, I'm a millennial and I, when I learned about marketing in college, it was more on the creativity side. It was, how does a campaign look and feel? It's what's the slogan going to be? Um, and then it became that finance position. Now we're sort of reverting back to uh, some of the creativity. And that's something that uh, has become fascinating to sort of witness. Yeah, I remember the like Twitter did a bunch of billboards. What what was that? Like 2018, 2019, yeah. where they took old tweets of famous celebrities who said, I'm going to be famous or I'm going to win the Masters one day. I'm going to win the whatever. Like, I'm going to win the US Open one day. And then they did it and it showed the picture of them doing it. But then the tweet that they showed and it had the year and the date. I thought that was really clever. It gave a whole different angle and perspective to Twitter that was really only like doable via a billboard. I mean, like that same creative, like you're talking about, wouldn't make sense in a Facebook ad. So, right. And you don't typically remember the impact of Facebook had on you from three, four or five years ago. But you Correct. do without a home. Yeah. And honestly, and not because this is, you know, m my business, but I truly believe <laughs> in the impact the physical world has. Period. Yeah. Like your most cherished memories are typically going to be from the physical world. And we see that being extremely important for brands going forward. Um, you know, dating back to your, your, your childhood, think about those fond memories you have family, there, there's trips, there's things, there's physical experiences. And I think people are yearning for that now, as we become so obsessed with the digital world, yeah. it's not going away. Um, but there is something sort of nice in thinking that we could potentially live in a world where the real world is important. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, but especially post pandemic, right? Like people are out. One of the things that I read in, in that study that said, you know, 64% of them are reporting declining results from digital advertising and digital marketing. It said these people are exhausted. Like they, yeah. they use the term digitally yeah. exhausted audiences. We've all been spending way too much time, not too much, not that I'm here to judge, but like I watch two hours of Netflix every single night. I'm not shy about that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not spending it a cold plunge or at the gym, but you know, we we all the, way, the, the pandemic are the, yearning for those influences are amazing. <laughs> <sighs> I wake yeah. up at three fifty five, and by the time the day is done, I've I've accomplished more it. than you have. You're a piece of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I that'll never be me. And I'll love those people. Stuff. Yeah, but you know, for for me, I do think there's something to be said coming out of the pandemic, where you know we're seeing record attendance at sports events, we're seeing record attendance at music festivals, uh, we're seeing a lot of people ditch. Instagram, like deleting it from their phone, uh, at least on the weekends or just forever. And, you know, like especially the, the younger generation coming up, as much as they love TikTok, they also love in-person, uh, in, in-person experiences, in-person events. So I totally see the value of it. 
and, and, and think about that. Those are all places, by the way, where you could actually advertise with that phone. There are networks and formats around every event that you just described. And by the way, I always like to tell us to folks that it's audience plus context. Mm-hmm. It's your audience plus context. You can create contextually relevant um, messaging depending on where something is, the surroundings, the environment, the weather, the time of the day. You know that your audience is going to see this ad at a certain time where they're doing something very specific. You have no idea if that's the case seeing a digital ad. You have no idea where I'm actually seeing that. Um, yeah, that's a huge sure. difference. Huge difference. And by the way, like this shit works. You know, <laughs> like I'm, we're not still alive and doing this thing and growing. Uh, if it didn't, it does work, and it's awesome. Seeing yeah. your ad in the real world never gets old. Um, I mean, seeing like, well, I would just say it this way. Out of home wouldn't be a multi-bajillion dollar business if it didn't work. I always just thought it was presumed to be only for the Geico's of the world that, you know, just have a certain amount of like, we need to buy X amount of eyeballs this month. And then every quarter they track how many total impressions they had across TV, billboards, commercials. Uh, I said TV, but, um, you know, Facebook ads, Google, like uh, total eyeballs to total revenue. I always thought that's what it was reserved for. The the in-person pixel or the true shed or whatever view shed, I think is brilliant. Uh, and knowing that I can d- get started with this for 10 grand or even less, 2,000 bucks a day at South by is is the answer to my my Googling that I started after reading that <laughs> that insight that 64% of marketers are seeing declining. So I would consider I would consider my Googling complete. I now have something that I can at least test or try <laughs> <laughs> beyond. <laughs> I'm yeah, happy to help you with you with your out of home efforts. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, jo- I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, no, but it's interesting. And this is the, the and by the way, back to the Geico example. A lot of those big giant companies, they still buy like that. That's not really our goal. Our goal is to work with the folks who can't, who don't necessarily have the budgets to spend like that. But we also want to work with those kinds of folks to get them to think the Geico's of the world, to get them to think about out of home in a performance oriented scope um, beyond just impressions on any random format out there in a much more dialed in, uh, optimized and targeted brand performance way. Um, but really, really the bread and butter here with us is working with folks who have never done it before and have never done it in a scalable or, or consistent way. Got it. So out of home 2.0, cost less, much better attribution. Th- those are the two main points. Anything else I'm missing? Yeah. Uh, much more cost effective, um, much better data uh, to plan, to buy, and to measure. Got Real it. world ads. Period. Got it. Yeah. Amazing. If someone wanted to reach out to you about getting a test going, where can they find you? What's what's the next step for people that are looking to tap into at home 2.0? Anyone can email me. Uh, I'm Greg at onescreen.ai. Um, I'm 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 available. Um, <laughs> even as a founder, I always love to talk to folks, business leaders, marketers. Um, you know, I'm always I'm a sounding board to fully help support people who are exploring this medium. Again, you can probably tell I'm pretty passionate about it. Um, you can reach me on LinkedIn. Uh, you fly an aerial banner over my house if you want to get in touch with me. <laughs> it's a good way. Um, really smart. That's really smart, actually. <laughs> I, I met with it last thing I'll say. I met with a guy uh, that on purpose paid for a plane to write a company's brand name, Sucks, in the sky over like the cheapest market he could find just so that someone could record it. He could post it online and then that went viral. So that's another way to use at a home. He didn't even care who saw it. He just wanted it to go up in the skies way before AI or anything could do that. But, and there's a social amplification to this, right? It's also why we also invest in making sure that we get beauty shots of your campaign in the wild, because companies love to use that online internally for investors, for customers. Um, yeah. It really is impactful that much. I believe it. Well, Greg, thank you so much for coming on and sharing the playbook, really, for getting into Out of Home 2.0 and making us 
performance marketers realize that there are other opportunities outside of Facebook and, and Google ads. <laughs> well, Max, I, I appreciate you having me on. Congrats to you. Uh, love the platform. Thank you so much. Chat with you soon. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Max show. It takes me and my team hours to produce it every single week, but it only takes you 15 seconds to hit that share button and text it to a friend, drop it in the Slack group, or share it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or any of your favorite social platforms. I appreciate you taking the time to check out my content. Have an awesome day.